You're watching Clemson University spring football as we start the second half. Homer Jordan in at quarterback. Going to the tailback, Cliff Austin, who carries for a couple of yards up to the 32-yard uh, line. No kickoffs in the game. There's Homer Jordan, the guy you'll hear a lot about with this season. He had an outstanding year last year. Passing for better than 54%. Had a fine year. Randy Vereen leaves the lineup. And Kevin Mack is back in. In the backfield. Sam, look at those stats. You take a look at it. I think the most impressive thing is the passing yardage over the rushing yardage. Now, here's a team last year with over 1,200 yards more rushing than they did to have passing. And, and the one thing that, that uh, Coach Ford said that we're going to try to do this year is pass the ball a little bit more. And it's a shame that they got the rain today to, to hold that down. Rain is still falling lightly. There is Kevin Mack who carried on that play, a junior from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Two letters. Ran for 287 yards last season, two touchdowns. Ball spotted down at the 32. It's third and eight for the White, trailing 10 to seven. Just starting the second half, playing 12-minute quarters in the spring football game. Homer Jordan to throw. Has a blocker with him, being rushed. Now lets it go, incomplete. Almost intercepted by the All-America Terry Kennard. Number 43 went flying in there with a fine defensive effort. This is why this young man is an All-American. Take a look at number 43, Terry Kennard. All right? Watch his play. He's watching Homer Jordan now. Now he sees the receiver. He's going to read the receiver, go for the football. He does bump him. That's a close call. But he got his hands on the football. That's what saved him. Dale Hatcher punting. And Kennard back in safety. The high snap. No pressure. High kick. Kennard comes in. Makes the reception on the fair catch. Spotted down at the 28-yard line. The Orange, leading 10-7, to will go on offense. Coach Dan Ford has rejoined us in the booth. We're at Frank Howard Field on the campus of Clemson University. What did you talk about with the coaches uh, during halftime? Coach well, I, we went down there just to receive the AP trophy, but it was kind of wet down there. I know that. <laughs> he likes it. The National there. Championship trophy handed to Coach Dan Ford. This is Peretti carrying nothing much there. Maybe a yard on the play. And William Perry, big number 66, 310, maybe 320 pounds, covering Anthony Peretti. And this sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, certainly was impressive in the first half. Yes, he was. He's a big man. And Peretti, the quarterback, has just done a super job with that big guy right there, Perry. We're going to see an awful lot of him this afternoon. Coach, I saw you when you were down to the field. I'm watching kind of listed a little bit towards the locker room. That old feeling you have to go to the locker room at halftime. <laughs> you, you, you get a habit of doing it. Uh. <laughs> Butler wide left, Magwood wide right. Peretti looking for Butler, doesn't have him, gets pulled down. Picked up a yard, but there's Perry again. And when he gets you, he doesn't let go. He's a strong man. And he put the one arm, I think he made the one arm tackle that time. The uh, GE, the, the refrigerator, <laughs> huh? <laughs> He must eat everything in the refrigerator. How do you feed him? Do you have a special budget just for him? Well, I, I, you'd be surprised. Uh, every young man we have, he's real well. <laughs> you know, when it gets so raining like this, uh, the, I think the defensive guys probably have got an advantage over the offense player. Third and long, Peretti to throw out to the right side, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, K.D. Dunn, who had that 66-yard touchdown completion in the first half. Peretti goes off, and the Orange forced to punt. Richard Henley, number 16, will go on to punt. And there we are. We're out of the rain. There's Mr. McGuire in the middle, and Coach Dan Ford is there. Dan Ford, you may remember, a uh, product of Alabama, the Crimson Tide, a good tight end, the days of Kenny Stabler. Henley getting it away. And a fair catch by Billy Davis at the 20-yard line. Gives the white possession for the second time in the first half. On the 20-yard line, 9.05 to go in the third quarter. The Orange leading 10 to 7. And there's Henley, who took some uh, punting instructions from Paul McGuire prior to the game. I'm very impressed with him. He did a fine job. And the thing about it is there are, there, there are no uh, uh, returns on the kicks. Now, take a look at him. The one thing I want him to do is, the only thing I want him to do is to change a little bit and put his right hand underneath the ball and I think he'll be able to drop it a lot flatter, and that'll get the ball to turn over for him. And once he was practicing a little bit on the sidelines, and he was really kicking the heck out of the ball, Sam. And I think over the summer, if he works on it, <laughs> he'll do okay. Kevin Mack carrying. Gets a couple of yards before he's hit hard on the play. 
by Kevin Gemmis, number 95. Let me say one more thing, Sam. I'll be sending Coach Ford a bill. <laughs> As an assistant coach, right? <laughs> Part-time assistant coach. As long as I get me some tagger paws in the mail, I don't care. We'll send you some, I'm sure. If you can help any of our players, anybody can help them, we'll send them anything that we have uh, with a tiger paw on it. Second down and seven from the 23. Homer Jordan still in the quarterback. And that's Mac carrying again. No, it's Cliff Austin carrying across the 25 to the 26. Cliff Austin, number seven, the leading rusher for Clemson University. Three-letter man. Rushed for 836 yards last season. Did you see Terry Kennard come in at the end of that play and hammer him? This young man is a very impressive football player. You were coming up, and I don't know whether you saw it, but he knocked a play, uh, knocked a pass down in the first series of downs that the White had the ball, and just played the play so beautifully you couldn't couldn't ask it anymore from a defensive back. On third down, the handoff going inside gets up to the 29-yard line and short of a first down. And uh, the white will be forced to punt on the play. So good defensive play by the orange. Denying the first down. And in comes Dale Hatcher, the sophomore from Chiraw, is it South Carolina? Chiraw. Chiraw? Yes, sir. Well, it'd be interesting to watch Hatcher right here. He slipped last time he punted. Watch and see how, if he tries to protect himself on this punt here. He led the ACC in punting last season. Got good footing this time. Good oh, kick. Look at this. Kennard back to the 20-yard line, and the Orange will take over. Good kick. 50-yard punt for Dale Hatcher. You're watching spring football from Clemson University. 7.18 to go third quarter. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Full contact karate, always a popular sport on ESPN. And on Monday, May 10th at 9.30 Eastern Time from Athens, Georgia, we'll bring you the Bantamweight Championship. Full contact karate on your total sports network. Comes in handy when you're in Atlanta trying to get your baggage. <laughs> you have problems down there? Oh, please. You're always traveling to Atlanta. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Ball on the 20-yard line. The Orange with a 10-7 lead. Anthony Peretti still in at quarterback. McCall and Williams, the running backs. This is Jeff McCall taking it outside. And he's brought down. Good play by Joe Glenn, the senior left end from Columbia, South Carolina. Got a hold of Jeff McCall and took him down for no gain. There's where the, the tearaway jerseys come into play again. I coach, you see him smiling. If you had him, it would have been, been gone. Well, we at least uh, got even yards that time. Still lost yards with the tearaways on. But uh, you notice now they're trying to run outside too much. He, he should have hit that a little bit tighter on, outside the offensive backs block. He, he tried to go to the sideline on that run. A little too wide. Yes, yeah, sir. Butler wide to the right. Magwood wide left. And KD Dunn is a tight right end. Anthony Peretti rolling, has Williams blocking for him, takes it down, gets a yard or two on the play, and he's brought down. Joe Glenn, number 53, was in there on the stop. Also in on the play, Lee Day, number 36, a sophomore from North Augusta, Georgia. There's Anthony Peretti going back to the huddle. Going back to your playing days, Coach Ford. How much of, of what you learned at Alabama is brought into your coaching philosophy here at Clemson? Well, I think the only thing you can ever do is, is, as a coach is, is learn from experience and, and draw from the experience you had. A lot of our experiences was, was from Alabama, and I've been around a lot of good Alabama people before, so I think mo most of what we know as a coach is from Alabama, but I think uh, our assistant coaches bring a lot of experience from other places, too. I think the, the, the key is to keep uh, enough people in your system who, from other places as, as well as for you from also. That's good. Hey, you listen to your assistant coaches quite a bit? Uh, yes, sir. They, I'll tell you the truth, and I think any head coach will tell you this, that they do all the work. They do the recruiting. They do the coaching. They do the planning, and, and you're sort of a figurehead most of the time. Just in That's Hendley punting once again, back from his own five, a line drive kick. Billy Davis makes the catch on the 41. The advantage to the white on the exchange of punts. And the White will take over, mark it at the 42-yard line, getting better field position. Henley going off. And with a score 10 to 7, 5.22 to go in this third quarter, playing 12-minute quarters. Mike Epley is back in at quarterback, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, 6'2", 185. Threw two interceptions in the first half. He's a left-hander, number 14. 
Goes to the tailback, Cliff Austin, who gets a couple of yards up to the 44-yard line. Carl Martin, number 31, the senior strong safety, made the stop as you look at Cliff Austin. Scored nine touchdowns last year. And scored one in the Orange Bowl. All right, here's where you come back and you go to the number 15, your wide receiver, Jeff Stockstill. Young man's got great moves, good hands. He's up on the outside. Double wide receiver right. Epley pitches back to Austin. <laughs> Gets a couple of yards to the 46-yard line. Number 71, Dan Benish, the senior left tackle. All ACC. He's a good one. Benish making the tackle. Dan's a good defensive football player. He, Dan's from Hubbard, Ohio, an excellent player for us here. And, and uh, I don't know if the people know this or not, that uh, Mike Epley was our starting offensive uh, point guard on our basketball team this past year. That's right. That's my hometown, you know. Youngstown, Ohio is where I'm from. Hubbard is just a suburb of right, Youngstown. Right. All right. So Dan Benish, the senior tackle, making Ohioans proud. Epley back to throw on third and six. Out to the right side. It's complete to Austin coming out of the backfield. Brought down at the 48-yard line. It's going to be short of a first down. Eldridge Milton, the sophomore linebacker, number 87, made the stop. There's Cliff Austin. A little disappointed that he didn't get the first down yardage. All right, Austin's coming out, but Milton, he's a linebacker now, taking into consideration. And take, take a look at how much ground he covers. He's right there. Austin, he gets right at Austin. Make sure he gets his arms around his waist. Cuts him off from the field, makes a tackle. Good tackle. The punt away. Kennard is in deep safety. They let it drop. Hits on the 25 and is down at about the 26-yard line. So the orange will go back on offense. Three minutes, 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Watching spring football at Clemson University. Continues to fall in pretty Clemson, South Carolina. Sam Rosen, Paul McGuire, and head coach Dan Ford here at Frank Howard Field. The annual spring game between the orange and the white. The winners eat steaks. The losers <laughs> get beans and weenies. <laughs> Billy Green is in at quarterback for the orange. Orange took the lead on a field goal, 23-yard field goal by Donald Igwebwege in the first half. And then a 66-yard touchdown play, pass play from Peretti to the tight end K.D. Dunn. Homer Jordan scoring for the White on a nine-yard run late in the first half, and the score 10 to 7. Braxton Williams, the tailback carrying, gets a couple of yards up to about the 28-yard line. Rick Bailey, the sophomore nose guard from Melbourne, Florida, making the stop on Braxton Williams, who goes off. And now we have Ray Wren, number 11, who's also a quarterback, coming up in the lineup. So we have two quarterbacks in the lineup. So. Wren is going out as a wide receiver to the left. Billy Green, number 10, is the quarterback. Craig Crawford, 48. Braxton Williams, the running backs. This is Williams, rather McCall in a tailback. McCall carries across the 35 to the 37. Jeff McCall switching off, playing both fullback and tailback position. With that kind of size and speed, he can do it both. Again, I, I, I've got to compliment the backs in the, in the backfield. That time, Craig Crawford number 48 for the orange what a block he got to open that hole <laughs> i love to watch your backs block coach they're doing a good job uh, evidently we got somebody hurt uh, or injured a little bit or somebody uh, got a mild injury or something because mccall shouldn't be playing tailback but we we're short a little bit of people now now it's crawford and mccall in the backfield first down play it's mccall going outside gets a block from crawford it's up to about the 39-yard line, close to the 40-yard line. Joe Glenn, number 53 in white, making the stop and getting up slowly as he did. Columbia, South Carolina, three-letter man, Joe Glenn. Joe Glenn had a little bit of problem in the first half getting to the outside, but uh, he's made two super plays so far in the second half. You know, you're talking about the, uh, the winners get the stakes. Yeah. And the losers get the hot dogs and beans. <laughs> the winners will also have dates, and the losers, I guarantee you, will be out alone. Butler wide to the right side. Double tight end formation. And up the middle goes Jeff McCall across the 40. Good power, getting a couple of extra yards. He was hit at the 40, but pushed his way forward to the 42. Calder settles, a junior defensive end from Laurenburg, North Carolina, number 97. In on the tackle on Jeff McCall, who's a senior. 
Rushed for 457 yards last season. Five touchdowns. You know, you talk about uh, a lot of people say second effort, and I, I don't like to use the term. I think it's a continuous effort. A, a player, second effort means he quit the first time, but McCall that time was hit at the line of scrimmage. His continuous effort picked up another two yards. Wide to the right side is Frank Magwood on third down. Green looking to throw to the tight end. KD Dunn. And look at him go. He got a, at least eight extra yards on that play. KD Dunn, who Coach Ford has told you has been probably the most impressive player in spring practice, driving down, making the, the reception and driving down to the 40 yard line. Again, the same play he scored on a while ago. A little jump pass over the middle. Chillers, the, the defensive back, number uh, 26, held him at the line of scrimmage but didn't hold him long enough. Dunn got, got away from him, got the ball, and picked up the first down. First down for the Orange on the white 40. The Orange leading 10 to 7 with half a minute to go in the third quarter. Jeff McCall takes it outside, picks up five on the play. Billy Dawson, number 31, the linebacker, a sophomore. Making the stop on Jeff McCall. I told you about Crawford, and I said, take a look at him. You watch this young man block. Coach, you've got a fine blocker in the backfield. I, I saw Mr. this one. I was watching this one because I, I figured it was going to run a sweep, but uh, he, he got uh, a nice block from McCall. He gave him some room inside. He, he, he turned his body there at the end, which he shouldn't have done, but uh, very fine effort. He went after the guy real well, and that's what we look for. Siren sound ending the third quarter. Skies have lightened. Rain has stopped. Can we get the fans back in the stadium? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, you're watching spring football at Clemson University. Good football from the national champions of 1981. The Orange 10, the White 7, end of the third quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. The Orange on the move at the 35-yard line. Second down and five. Orange leading 10-7. Billy Green, number 10, is the quarterback. He's a junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Has the football. Rolling right, being chased, and they won't let go. Good play by Joe Glenn, number 53, as Green couldn't beat him to the outside. That's the situation where the quarterback's running out there, and he sees Joe Glenn. He reaches down to try to find some speed that he just doesn't have, Coach, yeah. and it's a sickening feeling. He didn't, but I think that what happened, people won't, unless they saw it before, again, the other day, he automatically, again, he had a sweep call on both sides, uh, and he automatically, the fullback went the wrong way, and he saw it, and he the only, only thing he could do is turn up, and he got uh, credit for a bad play, but really the fullback caused the problem. Spot the ball at the 37 of the white. It's third down and eight yards to go. Third and eight. There's the correct yardage on the play. Green in trouble. Pitches back to Magwood. Frank Magwood, the wide receiver on the end of the round, goes down to the 30-yard line. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle, and it looked like he may have picked up the first down. Green was getting hit, but got rid of it nicely to Magwood. I'll tell you what. I feel so sorry for Ray Brown. He's over there, and he's making a tackle on Green, and then he just spun around and said, what happened? Where is the ball? Senior and Frank Magwood, who carried on that play. And let's see, marking it on the far sideline. They're looking at the chains. Hey, the assistant coaches are into it. Well, they have to eat hot dogs, too. <laughs> Who are the head coaches down on the side? Uh, okay, they're on the uh, orange team is Coach Don Denning, uh, one of our new coaches, coaching secondary, and he's the head coach for the orange team. White coach is one of our offensive line coach, Buddy King, and and they'll have to serve each other, whichever <laughs> one does the worst. It is a first down on the end around. Frank Magwood carrying, and the ball spotted down at the 30-yard line. The orange in possession and leading 10 to 7 with 10 and a half minutes to go in this spring football game the cheerleaders didn't quit they're still here not at all butler is wide to the left side rest of the team tight billy green a junior at quarterback this is jeff mccall getting about three on the play now to the 27 yard line danny triplet number 82 fine linebacker making the stop Orange with 10 first downs in the game. The White with nine. There's Jeff McCall. He's played himself a good, good football game. Yes, he has. And another guy, that, that big number, 81, KD Dunn, he just took the defensive end and rode him all the way to the sideline. You see McCall's numbers, 53 yards. Ray Wren, number 11, a quarterback, is in at wide receiver. He's wide to the left side. Duke Holloman is the tailback. McCall in at fullback. This is Holloman carrying. Across the 25 to the 23-yard line as they run inside. 
Duke Holloman, a junior from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He had a good scrimmage last week, didn't he, Coach? Yes, sir, he did. Uh, Sam, I tell you what we're going to have to do on Duke, though. He's, he's, had, he's got a, a bad shoulder, and they're going to have surgery next Wednesday on his shoulder. But he's, he's sucking him up and playing a, uh, with a little bit of pain out there today. <laughs> I guess you should be ready for the fall, though? Yes, sir. I mean, it's, all he's got to do is uh, tighten his shoulder up a little bit. It's, it's nothing that can hurt the youngster anyway, but he, he's all strapped up, but he, he's not going full speed. Third and three for the Orange. On the white 23-yard line, Green, Holloman carrying, and tackle for a loss. Good play, William Perry, number 66, 6'3", 310, or 320, depending on how much he ate for breakfast, uh, makes the stop on the play. Best third down player I've ever seen. It seems I like on third you. down, he goes nuts. I guarantee you, when it gets close to the end zone, and when uh, they get on our side of the field, a big play, he's going to come up with something big. Coach, do you have a problem with his stamina? Well, we, we, we don't really know. He, he was just a freshman last year, and we had another nose guard, Devane, who's a good player for us, and he, he's about 270. But uh, we, we played him for about 35 plays apiece, so that we never gave him a chance to get really uh, uh, tired in the football game. Okay. Igwebwike will try a 39-yard field goal. Peretti holding, Igwebwike gets it away. It's long enough, and it is good. Oh, you like to see that. Donald Igwebwike, the sophomore from Nigeria, a starting midfielder on the soccer team, walks on and boots one from 39 yards away. Sam Rosen, Paul McGuire, and head coach Dan Ford up in the booth here at Frank Howard Field in Clemson, South Carolina. You're watching the national champions of collegiate football in 1981, the Clemson University Tigers in their annual spring football game, and the Orange leading the White 13 to 7, Donald Igwebwike kicking his second field goal of the game. His first one 23 yards, the second one 39 yards. He's got a pretty strong leg, Coach Ford. Yes, sir, he does. Uh, he, he's got an excellent uh, leg for us, and uh, his, his percentage will be a lot better than it was last year. 11 plays, 51 yards, and the 39 yard field goal. Epley in trouble. Down he goes at the 25 yard line. Good rush on the play by Benish, number 71. Helped out by Dave Nolte, number 93. Nolte was supposed to play for the white, then moved over to the orange team. All right, Nolte is the guy that goes to the outside. Now, you take, take a look at here. There's the fake in the backfield. When he rolls out to the outside, nobody got out to help him. And that's Duncan, 55. I think the center was supposed to get out there and help him make the block on Nolte. He didn't get out there, and only forces him back to the inside, and it's a loss. Second down, 14 for the White, trailing 13 to 7 with seven and a half minutes to go. Deflected nicely by Mark Richardson, number 92 in that bandit position. Richardson, 6'1", 184-pound senior, getting outside, getting the hand up and deflecting that pass. Coach, and this is the one thing you're talking about, that bandit position. That's his job. He's got to get to the outside to take that short right away. He's got to get in the flat on that, on that particular coverage right there. And, uh, did a good job of getting underneath the uh, outcut there, short outcut, and um, uh, he read the coverage wrong. I believe, I believe he should have went to the other side. Third down and 14. Epley straight back, looking out for Bethay, and it is complete. Let's see, he got it. Nice throw Great and catch, catch right there. by Fitzhugh Bethay, number 37, a junior from Dillon, South Carolina. Great catch. Well, he threw this ball the only place it could have been completed. Take a look at Bethay. Now, he's breaking to the outside right here. You've got your bandit short, and he throws this ball right on the sidelines. Look at Bethay go after the ball. Now, you see his feet are inbound. The only thing the official was looking at now to make sure that he had control of the football, he did first down. First Good down throw. wide, yes. Big third down play. Good pass by Epley. Handing off to Mack, taking it outside. Nice run by Kevin Mack. Knocked out of bounds across midfield at the 49-yard line by the All-America Terry Kennard, but junior Kevin Mack, two-letter man from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Nice run, good speed to the outside. Kevin's got excellent speed. We, we ran Kevin a little bit of tailback this, this year. All right, here he goes, Coach. Go ahead. We think Kevin's going to be an excellent player for us. He may be the best tailback we have. We just haven't been using the tailback. We worked with him very good there. He's a very fast kid, outstanding speed. Second and short. And here's Mac again, and he this time dives forward for the first down. Kept his balance and just lunged forward, getting the first down. So the White on the move, trailing 13 to 7 with 7:04 to go in a spring football game. Hey, the one guy to let you know he's around, and that's Terry Kennard. <laughs> I mean, this guy gives you 100% all the time. 
I tell you the thing about Terry Kennard, he was our second leading uh, uh, tackler last year on our football team at safety. That tells you a lot about him. And the thing, uh, Billy Davis is a great player behind him. The only thing he's playing behind. Uh, There's Mack breaking through. He may go all the way. Touchdown, Kevin Mack. He went inside, got through the hole, and went right past the secondary. And it is all tied at 13. The White will go try to go in front with the extra point. But that's what Coach Danny Ford had said. Watch the speed of Kevin Mack, and he just burst through inside. I was just thinking we was going to have a one-point game. Well, you know, one thing, I'm, if I ever do any of your games, Coach, I'm not going to talk about one of your players. Watch what happens to, to Terry Kennard. He overruns the play. Mack breaks it right back to the inside. Just nobody there to pick him up, and he's gone. The only man, Jeff Suttle, had a shot at him. Couldn't catch him. Thank goodness we don't have to count this game. 47-yard <laughs> run. Bob Pauling will try the extra point. Epley holds. The kick is good, and the white has come back on the tremendous run by Kevin Mack, a 47-yard touchdown run. The score with 6.40 to go. The white 14, the orange 13. We'll be back in just a moment. Paul McGuire, head coach Danny Ford here at Clemson University. Scoring drive is 70 yards in six plays, a minute 31. The white taking the lead, a marvelous run by Kevin Mack. And a fine-looking running back, and we've been saying that about all the running backs. McCall, Williams, Mack, Austin. Got a real good running game here at Clemson. Get that line put back together again. You'll be number one again, Coach. Well, we've got a lot of work in front of us yet, I'll tell you that. But uh, we're excited about our, our opportunities. Already is back in the quarterback for the Orange. Handing off inside. Andy Hedden making the stop. Pickup of a couple of yards. Jeff McCall has been the workhorse for the Orange team in this game. Coach, getting back to that, uh, to Terry Kennard, uh, when he overran the play, is it, does he have a, a, a slight problem of being a little bit too aggressive, over aggressive? Sometimes you can get uh, too aggressive and, and not read everything uh, to the full play. You know, and I think he, he he probably read outside there which the play was, but thought the quarterback was going to keep it. Quarterback read it and gave it to the fullback. He overran the fullback. Double tight end for the Orange. Wide man is Kendall Alley to the right side. Peretti rolling right, looking for Alley. Now he tucks it up, but slips on the soft grass. Wet with the rain we've had uh, for a good part of this day and the loss of a yard on the play. Spot the ball at the 32. And it'll be third down for the Orange, trailing for the first time in the game, 14 to 13 with 5.35 to go. And you're watching the 1981 National Champions of Collegiate Football, the Clemson University Tigers. Well, that's a good feeling for you, Coach. You're going to have a winner one way or the other today. Well, yeah, well, somebody's <laughs> going to win. You know, we, we were talking about uh, Terry just a while ago, uh, the, the free safety. That's one guy you don't ever want to uh, get beat. Uh, he's the last one there is. Good catch that's by right. Frank Magwood, number two, and it's a first down. Big third play. Peretti hitting the wide receiver. Frank Magwood, the senior, juggles it but holds on. Good play by Magwood. Well, Magwood is, is on the ground when he loses the ball, but this is an excellent play. It shows you great hands. See Peretti just threading the ball. All right, take a look at it. He gets hit there. He gets popped here again. He's going to get popped again. Now the ball's loose. But according to the rules, he is down, even though he's on the man. A little bit late hit there. She might could have had a penalty there on, on uh, Pleasant, but uh, Youngster made a good play on it. Magwood's got the best hands in the got on the football team. Had a good run on the end of the round. He's come up with two big third down plays in this game. That's Duke Holloman carrying. Past the 45, up to about the 47 yard line. Picked up about three. On the play, maybe four yards. Mark it at the 48-yard line. Four and a half minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Watching spring football. Are those future Tigers? Yeah. Coach Danny Ford checking them out. One two of the coaches' kids? Two of our coaches' kids. There, too. Yeah. Both, both of them are our linebacker coach, uh, uh, Coach Herring's youngster, and Coach uh, Stokely, our quarterback coach's youngster. What a super environment to bring the kids up into, I tell you. Great place to be. Clemson is. Second and six for the Orange, trailing by one. Duke Holloman gets to midfield. 
It'll be a big third down play for the Orange once again. Third and four. Ray Brown, Andy Hedden in on the play. There's Ray Brown, the junior from Rome, Georgia, number 72. Hedden, number 12, a senior, three-letter man, who had four sacks last year. Coach, all right, putting you on the spot. What would you call here? Well, I think I'd go probably block down with a tight end sprint out here, and they may do that. They've got the tight end up there, the unbalanced, uh, unbalanced lines. They'll probably do it. And the quarterback may end up running. Peretti got a couple of blockers in front of him, and he's got the first down. Holloman and McCall leading Anthony Peretti down to the 41-yard line. <laughs> you got to see the look I'm getting from the coach over here. Like, didn't I call that one? <laughs> All right. Well, I was right that time. But I, t I tell you what, that, what the orange team can do right here. There's three minutes, 25 seconds. Uh, the field goal kicker, uh, one more first down, and he's got a shot at three points. So they, they can be very, very patient. All right, there's Perry, number 66. They got him knocked to the inside. He gets an excellent block. Peretti picks up the first down. That's just good hustle. A good call, Coach. <laughs> well, it worked that time. Sometimes it don't work. Clock running, 3.10 to go. You're watching spring football at Clemson University. Pitch back to Jeff McCall. Inside the 40 to the 39. It'll be second down, about seven yards to go. In on the tackle for the White. Lindsay, Otis Lindsay, number 44, had a look at him, the senior linebacker. There's Jeff McCall. When they had to draft the seniors, Coach, Igwe Buikbe, did they, was he number one? Uh, yes, sir. He, he's, he, I he, mean, was he the number one draft choice by the seniors for the Orange team? That's the guy I would have taken. Right. Um, when, they, when they chose up our kickers, uh, he was the first kicker chose, but the other team had the first choose on, on our punter, so they chose Hatcher. So it, it just we alternate positions when they choose. But if they be very, very patient here, and it's, it, they, if they get one more first down, they in field goal range of, of uh, Donald, and then they got a chance that they're behind by one point, they can win the football game. Sam Rosen, Paul McGuire, and head coach Danny Ford. You see the time remaining? Two minutes, 38 seconds to go in the spring football game. We hope you've enjoyed it from Clemson University. Started off as a rainy day. The weather has really gotten a lot better. And the crowd that has remained here at Frank Howard Field uh, certainly enjoying this football game. White leading the Orange 14 to 13. Orange with second down and seven to go at the White 39-yard line. Anthony Peretti, the sophomore quarterback, holding on to the football. On the option, wrestle down. And flags go down. Ray Brown, number 72, made the tackle. But I don't know. Did he get a face got, mask? I believe they got him a face mask there. So uh, I think they, they, they may have changed this penalty to a 10-yard penalty this year. Watch and see if they don't give him 10 yards here. All right, take a look at number 72, Ray Brown. There it is. You see his right hand is on Peretti's face mask. Good call by the officials. They're both there. That's the old accident play. All right. Now, don't ever tell me coaches are dumb anywhere because looking at Coach Ford, and I took a look at his roster, when he got Donald, he has no other Donalds on his team. <laughs> so when he says Donald, he's the only guy that the stands up. The only one up. will answer, right. <laughs> That's right. They mark the ball at the 32-yard line. It's a first down for the Orange. And Peretti calling signals with 2.32 to go. The Orange on the move. This is Jeff McCall. Good. First through the middle. Nice run by McCall inside the 25 to the 24. He really just... Shot through that hole. Got his way forward that time. Then excellent run there by McCall. All right, you take a look at the, the the offensive line is moving out very well, but McCall has got excellent acceleration at the, as soon as he gets his hands on the ball and, and just no hesitation at all. And that's the one thing you really like to see in a back. It doesn't hesitate, not looking for a hole, believing that the hole is going to be there and running to it. Right, if you find a tough flat back, and make four yards carry, you're in good shape. Second and three for the Orange. It's McCall again. He's got the first down close to the 20-yard line. And certainly the Orange within field goal range of Donald Igwebuike right now with 1.45 to go. Timeout is called. The White leading 14 to 13. Now you see part of the crowd that has remained through this game through a hard rain that hit here before. The rain has stopped. Don't forget, every Thursday night on your Total Sports Network, the best weekly boxing show you'll find anywhere. Top-ranked boxing as we go around the country to bring you the best in boxing action. You've seen some great fighters make their debuts and uh, proceed along their professional careers on ESPN. We'll continue to bring them to you every Thursday night. Right here, spring football with a minute 25 to go in the fourth quarter. The Orange trailing by one on the drive. Jeff McCall takes it outside and dives forward for a couple of more. 
All right, Coach, the, 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 the clock is running, 115 and counting. Now, is this a situation where you take your team and move the field position to get Donald in the middle of the field? Well, I think, uh, of course, the, our assistant coaches can't see it. I can see it up here because I'm in the box. But in a regular game, we'd be have coaches in their box upstairs. But due to the field circumstances, I would stay on the left hash here because it's kind of muddy in the middle. He, he slipped a while ago. So I, I would keep the ball running to the left here and try to stay on the left. They can't see it from here and here. They go to the right. Peretti holds on to the ball inside the 15, inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. Now Anthony the position Peretti. he's on now, he's in good shape right now because the field's dry on the right on, on the hash over there. But if he gets another uh, two yards, he can put it back in the middle and be just like an extra point field goal because it's, it's not torn up. The field's not torn up down there. Excellent point. Yeah. See that sand? There's things you don't think about when you're up here. You take a look yeah. at that field. That's why you listen to the guys in the booth. That's what they're up there for. Yes, I see. But they, they can't see it down there on the field. It all looks the same. But up here, you can tell the field's torn up a little bit. But now they've got good footing. Uh, it's a chip shot. Uh, they better not miss now. So the other guys are going to get on to them. 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. White 14, orange 13. If you like auto racing, the best in auto racing, right here on your Total Sports Network, as we bring you NASCAR racing on ESPN, our extensive coverage of auto racing in 1982, including seven live telecasts from the NASCAR Winston Cup Grand National Series. NASCAR racing on your Total Sports Network, ESPN. The guy, there's number 17. That guy's really played a fine football game. Really impressed. Anthony Peretti. Anthony Peretti had a good spring. Very impressed with his uh, attitude, his, his working habits. And, uh, his father's a high school coach down there in Jacksonville, Florida, Bishop Kenny High School, and, and he does a heck of a job for us. And it's got to be a, a, a little bit more pressure on a young man, and, and, and he's got to have the right, di right disposition and the great attitude when you know that you've got, you're playing behind a guy like Homer Jordan, who is an excellent football player, and, and it's, it's almost impossible to take that spot away from him. Well, that's right. Homer's uh, a far ahead of, of both other quarterbacks right now, but what if Homer gets hurt? You know, the guy's got to look somebody else, and it's got to be Epley right now or Paredic. And uh, right now, still a toss-up. I think Anthony's had a good game today. Mike hasn't had such a good game. He, he will have one. McCall takes it into the middle of the line to the five-yard line. Now, one thing uh, that's been very impressive as well in this game, the team, uh, the offensive backs haven't fumbled the ball at all. I'm very surprised, and we caught the ball pretty well today because of, uh, of the rain and everything. I, I think we'd have a, a few more drop balls. I can remember one drop ball so far. The, the only problem, the only problem so far is it, uh, and that basically was the white offensive line offside. Uh, that's what these games are all about, what spring practice is all about get rid of all those mistakes in the spring so when it comes to regular football season and that's basically the only mistakes that they've made sure they have they have been both those youngsters were sophomores so uh, that's experience again and off to McCall he gets to the three yard line with 10 seconds to go 11 seconds to go on the clock quick timeout and the field goal kicking unit comes on all right now I want the coach to explain something to me take a look at the offensive line they're moving all the way to the left away from the ball coach go well, I think if we had any guts right now, uh, we'd go ahead and snap it over here once we got settled. They got <laughs> time out here, but uh, they only got two people defensively moved over here with us, uh, two defensive people. So we we got to fake off this where the center snaps the ball to number 48 here, our, our tailback or fullback, Crawford, in that set right there. And no, we've got uh, eight guys blocking against two, so we should have a successful play. Well, you're off. You're, the white team quit. Well, you can. Uh, <laughs> They're leaving. They're new, rule, new rule last year. You can call timeout, and any a number of players can come in over to the sideline. And uh, <laughs> it used to be you could only talk with one guy at a time during a timeout, but now you get your whole team over there. So now the white team's got a problem. If he hits us and they get beat, I think the coaches are probably telling unless you want uh, uh, to eat hot dogs, you better block <laughs> his that or field goal. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. I saw. It. Ray, what was it, Ray Brown talking to Donald, standing in the back backfield. The, uh, the white offensive right or defensive right tackle came back and told Donald, if you know what's good for you, you're going to miss it. it just and the guys on the orange <laughs> saying, if you know what's good, well, you better make it. Well, he just cleaned his cleats, too. Well, they could do this fake now because they still have a, uh, they still have one more timeout. They could do it. Uh, they could do it. They're in a third down too. So you know, yeah. really in a game, you, you know, it, it takes a little bit of guts because if, if you mess up, snap, you're in trouble. 19-yard try. Iguabuike gets it away. It's perfect. His third field goal <laughs> of the game. There is one of the heroes of the game, the sophomore from Nigeria. 
uh, starter on the soccer team and the uh, leading field goal kicker on the football team, Donald Igwebwike, with his third field goal of the game. Eight seconds to go, and the Orange has regained the lead, 16 to 14. Real good drive coming back after trailing by one point. Uh, again, I have to compliment Peretti and the fine running of McCall leading the team down. They did a good job there. Good, very good drive. Uh, a couple of good third down plays there where we got on the corner to, and uh, got good blocking by the fullback, which Paul talked about uh, most of the day. They did an excellent job there. Super. You know, the thing about it is that's what I said, Coach. That would have been, if I was a senior, that would have been my number one draft pick in that draft. Would have been Donald. They say, hey, he won the football game. You got to have the guy that can put points on a board. Oh, wait a minute, how come they're giving him the ball on the delay. 35? Well, they, the they had a penalty, and, and it's correct. Because right. what he delay did, of the game. Yeah, delay of the game. But one of the, because of the penalty, they had too many people come on the field. And that's a good rule, too. Uh, we nearly lost a football game only one year uh, against South Carolina. We had our guys get happy at the end of the game, and they ran on the field and got a 15 yard penalty. I see. Homer Jordan back in to try and pull off some magic deep downfield for Bethay and Kennard took it away so the All-America Terry Kennard intercepts to end the football game well you have what eight guys back and three guys rushing to Kennard's play he is your free safety playing center field and there's nothing much that Jordan could do is just just that home run ball I notice one thing and you'll see Kennard come in here and make the play he's He's the deepest, deeper than the deepest can go. But the thing about it is, do you have a play offensive like the, like the pros do, Coach, where you, where you line up three or four receivers on one side and go ahead with it? Well, we do. I think everybody does. Once anybody ever sees anybody successful doing something uh, unbelievable, they put it in. <laughs> so I think everybody in the country has got that play now. Spring football at Clemson University, a real good ball game. The Orange comes back to defeat the White 16 to 14. A fine effort. Sam Rose and Paul McGuire and head coach Danny Ford here at Clemson University. And we hope you enjoy this spring football game. It's all over. The Orange wins it, but we'll be back in just a moment. Clemson University, where the spring football game is all over, and Clemson has won. The Orange defeating the White 16 to 14. Head coach Danny Ford, another close game for Clemson. Well, we, we're in a lot of close games, and I hope we continue to stay in them because that means we're doing something right. All right, quick assessment of what you saw out there. I know you're going to go back and watch it on the films and uh, evaluate all your players, but a, a quick general assessment of what you saw out there. First of all, we played everybody, which is important for their mothers and fathers to see them play. And uh, secondly, uh, not many mistakes. A young offensive uh, jumping off sides, which uh, we know that. That's a problem. We've got experience. We've got to correct that before next fall. Uh, caught the ball well, uh, our backs ran well, blocked well. Offensive line not too bad blocking for, for, uh, for a young group. And uh, overall, pretty pleased because we did score more points than I anticipated scoring. I thought for a while it may be 3 0 there. And obviously, so the guys were in pretty good shape because nobody seemed to get uh, seriously injured at all. Well, we've got, uh, we had a lot of youngsters out. We came in today's ball game with four offensive tackles on, on both teams. And if anybody got hurt, we don't know what we were going to do then. But we had to play on offensive guard and tight end there some at the end when they went to two tight end formation. But uh, overall, so we were pleased. We had one uh, knee surgery uh, in the middle of spring. And uh, so far, we've been pretty lucky with the injuries, which is the key of any, you hate to see any youngster ever have any kind of uh, problem. Paul, I know you enjoyed yourself. Yes, I did, boys, and I want to tell you something. I had the orange, and the you two dummies on my left had the white. Now, I, I, you're not calling the coach dummy. I'm going to talk about you, Sam. But when the coach picks the white team, you know, I, I went with the kicker. I just thought that you know they would do well. You had 15 players that didn't play in this game. Coach, were any of those guys starters? Uh, yes, sir. They are capable of being starters. Uh, we got a, a Ray Brown that played. Uh, he's got to compete with James Robinson, a youngster who didn't go through any of our spring, a big a defensive tackle that weighs about 270 pounds, too. Uh, so we got some pretty good young big guys on defense there. But uh, uh, he didn't play much. Our offensive tackle's got a chance to play some. Uh, Hudson didn't play any. And uh, we had uh, too many people out. Uh, we were too thin to put on a, a real, real fine football team uh, on the field day. You can't do it to buy enough. But they, they had fun, and they competed, and it was a lot of fun to watch. I know you're not going to be able to see it until the, actually until you look at the films. But one thing, uh, the offensive line, were you, were you both both of them orange and white? Were you pleased with it? Did you see anybody just at a glance that, that looks like that they've come along? Well, I think so. I think uh, every time, but when the big play came up, they uh, the young freshman uh, did pretty well against Perry. It looked like our big nose man, and, and he's given him fits all year or all spring uh, the, in, in our 20 practice sessions. That, uh, 
uh, Perry's really treated him pretty pretty bad there for a while. So I'm glad to see him uh, growing up and getting better and, and improving. Uh, except when he wanted to, when the big guy wanted to, <laughs> yeah. he, he made something happen to. Coach Ford, thanks for sitting up with us, and uh, we really enjoyed having you. I know you enjoyed staying out of the rain. I did, and I, I tell you, our people really appreciate having y'all on campus. Y'all did a super job. We appreciate the uh, thanks y'all do for college football, and, and uh, we thank uh, ESPN for being here. Okay, thank you, and good luck to you this summer. You will be getting ready for fall football. Clemson goes back to practice in August, and then the season starts for real in September against Georgia. Hope you enjoyed it. Spring football from Clemson University. The Orange will eat steaks. They win it 16 to 14 over the white. For Paul McGuire, head coach Danny Ford, this is Sam Rosen saying thanks for being with us on ESPN. More spring football, May 8th from Notre Dame. So long, everyone.